Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the new Asset Manager. With the recent update we have implemented a new feature we call the Asset Manager that allows you to organize, group, sort and um, modify all the Dungeon Fog assets and your personal assets, your custom uploads, in a way that you can use them in collections. So I'm going to walk you through all those in a minute. First of all, we have also changed the way that our uh, prop tool works. You might notice that we have removed the um, asset library link, this little image icon down here. We just don't need it anymore, so we wanted to free the space for that. Um, instead, we have reworked the way that the um, that your access to all the dungeon fork assets in the library work. We have all those organized in a folder structure so you can simply click here and browse everything our full library directly here out of the um, prop tool which also means that now you don't have to always go to the asset library select and yellow highlight those assets you want to add to the toolbar and then use them to place props no all you need to do is you go into your let's say fantasy settings um, and you pick an open urn and you place it somewhere like here and done so whenever we release a new monthly prop pack we will do that in mostly in the section flavor um, you don't have to go to the asset manager add them to your toolbar and then work with them no in the future all you need to do is go into flavor pick the new monthly prop pack and start working with it. This also means that now that the settings are organized in here, we have repurposed the way this selector up here works. Here, you can now switch if you want to access the Dungeon Fork library, your personal uploads or your collections. But what are those collections? Now that's what we talk about in the new Asset Manager. You can find a link to the Asset Manager either here up in the main menu, the second to the left, which is Assets, or you can always click on the little uh, link down here in the, in, in the Prop Tools uh, selector and just go to the Asset Manager. This is the new Asset Manager and it's organized uh, in a way of two columns. In the left column you have everything that Dungeon Fog offers or that you have uploaded. So you have the Dungeon Fog library or your personal uploads. Um, in the Dungeon Fog library, again, this is a folder system. So you can always open each folder and see what assets are in there. You can switch between a list view and a, uh, a preview and, and a thumbnail view. Um, you have the search bar, so you can define if you want to search for something. And you can also say, let, let me search in just the uh, library column. Or do you want the search to include the right column, your personal collections as well? That's up to you. Um, but also, we have built the Asset Manager in a way that he can independently organize collections for props, textures and tokens. We might add other things in the future there, but for now, you can organize prop collections that are independent from your texture collections and independent from your token collections. For this tutorial, we will stay with the prop collections, so let's, let's stick here. And now we want to create a new collection. Click on the new collection, let's name them trees. And we have the tree collection here. All I need to do is I need to find trees. I can do this either by browsing or just don't include my collection or just by typing tree in here. Now, as I do that, it automatically restricts the search result, it's a filter system. So I can see that in fantasy, this is all I have for trees. And I'm pretty happy with that because let's pick 
the dying fern tree. It's a drag and drop system, so all you need to do is pull them over. Autumnal tree. Whoop, I don't want to upload. You can always upload custom assets here as well. Um, or you can pick assets that have already been customly uploaded. But in our case, let's take one last tree, um, the dark, no, let's go for, let's see, Victorian, a dead tree. Let's take that one as well. So we have a dead tree now. I can sort and organize that simply by dragging and dropping. So I can say, no, I want the fir tree at first, um, then the dying one, then the autumnal tree, and then the dead tree at the end. No, let's just... Let's do it like that, kind of a life cycle here. By clicking on the name, you can always rename them and give them your personal names. Um, by clicking on the setting icon, you can now modify all the settings, all the settings that are usually available through the uh, prop tool or the select tool. Um, you can also define uh, dynamic shadows already up front. You can define light sources and you have a lot of things that you can do. If you like what you've applied to one prop and you want to copy the exact settings over to another prop, you can copy those settings and move them over. The tags allow you to um, winter. The tags allow you to um, tag your props with personal search parameters, which means that you can organize them in a way, uh, in a way that your brain space works. Um, so you're not dependent on how we name them, but you can name them in a way that you can easily find them. Um, every tag that you apply automatically works with the search bar. So whenever you search for something, it also looks in the tags and gives the tag results back. So whenever I type uh, winter, I will now find my autumnal tree here. So let's adjust that a little bit. Let's make this a little bit greener. Now it's getting bluish. No, I want it greenish. There you go. And no, I'm fine with the size. I'm fine with, with, I just want it to automatically cast shadows. And since it's a tree, let's say it casts, mm -hmm, no, let's stick with that. Save, okay. Um, another important thing is I can duplicate things here. So um, if I like what I did to this tree, I just want a, a, a variation of it. For example, a color variation. All I need to do is I can duplicate it go into the next one and change the there very winterish and change the um, colors. So now I have a variation of the same tree here. Yeah, I think that's it. We have the sorting, we have the settings, we have the duplication, we have the copy settings and paste settings. So I think it's very straightforward how to work with the asset manager. Now let's see what we can do in the editor with our, um, with our new collection here. So when I go back to my map um, and I go to my collections here, I can see that this new collection has been created. And um, here I can see the, it's named new category. We forgot to name our category, so now it's called new category. Um, <clears throat> I have this little dice icon here. So without the dice icon activated, all I can do is I can pick this and place it. There you go. Um, I already have, sorry, I need to, my camera is a little bit in the way here. Um, I already have a random rotation and a random scaling. That's why um, every prop I place is, might be in a different size or in a different rotation. But what I don't have is I don't have different props on every click. And that's exactly what this dice does. When I select this, a random asset out of my collection is picked. It might get also applied random parameters. 
And now whenever I place something down, it will automatically create this asset. And as you see, for those where I've already applied the random shadow, uh, the, the dynamic shadow, there you go. Dynamic shadow is rendered automatically. And uh, this is a very powerful tool if you want to create, as I just did, forests, if you want to create clutter, debris, rock piles, crumbled things, things that ha are heavily um, are heavily relating on uh, um, on random props. Uh, so this is a very powerful tool for random creation here. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is that we have this create a collection out of current map feature. Now, when you look at this map, I've already built this map and I'm very happy with it. Um, so I want to create a collection out of all the things I've used in here. So what I can do is I can go into my asset library, um, to my asset manager, apologies, and create a collection from the current map. Let's call this winter. Okay. Now what, what uh, this button does is um, it creates a collection with all assets and their settings based on this map. Now you see that there are things like this, which is a custom prop that I have uploaded on the live server. But when I copied the map onto our test server, it wasn't available anymore. So this is a, this is a custom asset that couldn't be found. This might be happening to you as well when you're taking maps from other users, because again, we are, we are very protective when it comes to intellectual property and we do not allow uh, you uh, to share maps when we are not 100% certain that you have the right to share customly uploaded assets as well. Uh, we're going to remove them if you share this map. You can share the map. It's just people who clone the map will not get the custom, prop, uh, the custom uploads that you have made. Um, so all I need to do here is I just need to remove it to clean my, there are some others here. Um, so that's how I can create uh, uh, collections out of maps. Why do I think this is very important for us? I think this is a very powerful community feature because it means that if you like to do things like creating sprite sheets or prop collections, you can take all the dungeon fog assets, rework them in a way that you think are, they are valuable for other users, create a sprite sheet out of that, share that in our public libraries, and people can pick them and create collections out of them. I'm going to do the same for you. Whenever a monthly prop pack comes out, I will create um, a, a, a sample map based on the new prop pack, which might be a sprite sheet or just a beautiful map that I had fun to create with the new asset pack. And I will adjust all the assets on that map in a way that I think they work ideally uh, for me. So when you take this map, you can very easily click create collection for this map and you will have a custom collection for all the props with all the light settings, all the color settings and everything that I use to create this map. And I really hope that the community is going to pick up on that and is start to share this. So if you are going to do this, please add the hashtag sprite sheet to those maps that you're going to share so that they are organized and that people can find it. We would very much welcome you to help us create sprite sheet collections um, and distribute them to the other community members. Always keep in mind, don't use customly uploaded props where you're not certain if you have the intellectual property to share and distribute them with others. If you have them, that's fine. Um, but if you're uncertain, just don't do it. Just work with the dungeon fork assets because every dungeon fork asset can be used for sprite sheets for other dungeon fork members. Right, I think that's it. With that said, thank you very much and happy map making.